Today's video is going to be another 6.5 Creedmoor video. We're testing some 135 grain Burger Classic Hunter bullets and some 140 grain Sierra Match Kings. We're going to be using a few different powders here today. We got H4350, Stayball 6.5, and Vitivore N555. So I've got five round groups loaded here, but we may only shoot three round groups based on barrel heat because we are running a suppressor with a carbon fiber barrel and it is warming up rather quickly. So we may not do the full five rounds of each because part of me kind of wants to test it with just the brake as well as the suppressor suppressor to see the difference between the two but not sure what we're going to do still debating but uh we're going to go ahead and get started here with 41 grains of h4350 with the 135 grain burger classic hunter bullet shooting at about 100 yards for those of you that are curious about the equipment, all of the equipment and components and everything that is listed in this test will be in the description below the video. All right, 41 grains of H4350 on the top left diamond. $26.99. 6 27 oh, I didn't catch that velocity I'm gonna move the garment a little closer Twenty seven oh seven Twenty seven eighteen Okay, so we missed one of the velocities there the uh second or third shot didn't catch it but the average velocity was 27 13 the extreme spread was 27 and the standard deviation was 10 I want to get them a little bit lower than that but overall it's not a bad start especially for a, I would say a five round group but technically a four round group per the the instrument um, not catching one of the shots but the group was good so that's a that's a really good start considering the last time I took this gun out to shoot it I was shooting factory ammo and it really didn't shoot that great but uh I cleaned the gun really good and then took it out and fouled it with a few shots and then we we're technically starting with a cold bore today so right out of the gate much more impressed than we were when uh, we took it out and shot it last time part of that may have been the suppressor uh, by the end of the test I noticed that the can had just barely shaken loose a little bit so that definitely could have affected things but I don't really have any way to prove that now so anyway the next group that we're gonna be shooting I'm gonna give the gun plenty of time to cool since we're shooting five round groups this time but it's gonna be 42.8 grains of Stayball 6.5 behind that 135 grain Burke Classic Hunter. That next group is gonna go on the top of the center diamond. All right, we gave some time to cool off, try to kill the Mirage a little bit. So we're going to go for the top of the center diamond here with 42.8 grains of Stayball 6.5. 2772. 2762 Missed another shot. I don't know what's going on with the Garmin here, but I'm having a hard time picking up shots. This is very abnormal for the Garmin. 2742 2750 so that group was a little weird we had one shot that went high and right and then I think the other four went into that tight little cluster down to the lower left so either way that was an acceptable group to me because I think that um, with that first shot being a different powder there might be some kind of a variance here that changed the point of impact a little bit for that first round the next four went into like practically one ragged hole so that was a tight little cluster um, I would definitely be very apt to retrying that load just based on how those four rounds went into that, that smaller cluster there. But that could have just been a fluke. It's hard telling. So, uh, again, we only caught four shots on the, the Garmin. I, I guess I just need to keep it right under the can because it seems like if I push it too far back, it misses shots periodically. But the velocity statistics on this one were pretty much the same as the last. Average muzzle velocity of 27.56 with an extreme spread of 29. And a standard deviation of 11 so essentially the velocity spread was 
about the same. But we are going to shoot one more load with the 135 grain burger and it's going to be 41.9 grains of vitivory in 555. Now essentially to get these loads because you guys um, often ask me how I come up with these loads. Um, we shot factory ammo in the first test. The 135 grain burger and the 140 grain Sierra Match King both shot well with factory ammo. So I just took three different powders out of the hydrogen manual that I'm already a fan of and I took the max charge and then I just downloaded it by 5% and uh, seeded the bullets to what I believe is a, a safe seeding depth. So that's pretty much it. There's really not a whole lot to it. I basically just took bullets that showed promising results on paper with factory ammo and then I just made up hand loads with loads that should be safe. Um, normally I don't like to get that close to max right out of the gate but I've shot so much 6.5 Creedmoor that I'm a lot more comfortable with it than some other cartridges. So I'm usually more conservative with cartridges I'm not familiar with but this one I'm, I'm pretty confident that these are safe charges so if they're not I'll tell you. But so far um, nothing insanely spectacular if we not shot that first round high that would have been a fantastic group and i pretty much would have been done but uh we're gonna go ahead and do the vitivory powder and then we'll move on to the 140 sierra match kings all right next up is vitivory in 555 41.9 grains and we are going for the top right diamond Twenty six ninety. Twenty six ninety one. Missed another velocity. Gosh dang it. I've never had the Garmin miss this many shots. This is so weird to me. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or what, but it's normally super forgiving, even with suppressors. Twenty six ninety three. And 2693, holy crap. I think we found our load. <laughs> so, uh, some of that horizontal dispersion may have been me just because I kept fidgeting with the uh, Garmin. And every time I get up, I get less comfortable. <laughs> so that's me making excuses, that's what that is. But, uh, in this scenario, I think that was an excellent group. So, I'm happy. Because again, this gun, right out of the gate, didn't shoot everything great, so um, considering I have been screwing around with the the Garmin a little bit and letting the barrel get warm, I'm not letting it cool off real good before I shoot the next group. I'm just putting the chamber chiller in there for a while and, and hoping that it doesn't get super hot. But the Mirage is terrible, so I'm really happy with that, especially after those first three rounds. That's that's fine with me. So, but the velocity consistency was phenomenal. We're gonna go over that here in just a second. So again, uh, for those of you that are like, man, you're making a lot of excuses for a group that really doesn't look spectacular, um, and you're claiming that it's like one whole group. It's not a one whole group, but it's a good group to me. Um, but the velocity is just as important to me in most cases as the group size for a rifle like this you want it to have a consistent velocity as well of a good as a good group size and this one had a great spread so our minimum was 2690 our max was 2693 so our extreme spread was literally 2.7 feet per second which is awesome don't know if it'll do that every time but this time it did it and on paper it shows that they were both kind of tracking so that was that was really good the standard deviation was 1.1 feet per second it doesn't get much better than that obviously again don't know that it'll do that every time, probably not, but on paper it shot great. On the uh, Garmin, the numbers looked really good, so as far as I'm concerned, that so far is the load to go after. But we're going to shoot the 140s next regardless, but if we're going to revisit any of the 135 loads, obviously it's going to be this one. So the next thing we're going to be testing is we're going back to H4350. We're going to do the same order again. So it's going to be H4350, then Stay Ball 6.5, then in 555 again. Now these are all just loaded to 2.8 inches overall length, um, just mag length essentially for standard uh, AICS magazines. But the next load is going to be 39.4 grains of H4350, and we're just going to shoot them on the same order on the paper. So left to right, we're going to have 
Left is H4350, middle is Stable 65, and then right side is going to be in 555. So I'm going to let this cool off for a little bit. We'll get the Garmin set up and ready to go, and then we'll shoot the next group. All right, 39.4 grains of H4350 with the 140 Sierra Match King, going on the left side of the center diamond. Six forty six twenty six forty eight twenty six forty eight. Oh man, that opened up bad. I'm still missing shots on the Garmin. Um, I'm just gonna leave it alone at this point. Twenty six sixty. Twenty six thirty four. So that group was awful, which is pretty obvious. Um, the average was twenty six forty seven. The extreme spread was twenty six, and a standard deviation of nine point three. So it's not even the worst velocity spread, really, because I think that was better than the first two groups that we shot. Actually, the third one was just spectacular as far as the spread is concerned. But the group size on that was terrible. So. That's why we shoot different stuff. But uh, shooting the factory ammo kind of gave me a general idea of what might shoot good. It did not tell me what will shoot good. So the 135 looked promising across the board. The 140 so far, um, not great. So uh, we're gonna check to make sure the suppressor's still tight and everything, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, load the next group and uh, fire away. All right, next we got 42.2 .2 grains of Winchester Stayball 6.5 on the center of the big center diamond. There is already one shot on there. I covered it up with tape, but that was a cider just to make sure the gun was zeroed before we started this test. Twenty-seven eighteen. Twenty-seven oh two. Did not get a reading. I'm starting to think it literally just isn't picking up the third shot. No, I did. 27.32. It just was a little delayed. 27.07. 27.14. Well, the 140 Sierra Match King is not uh, impressing today. The group sucked again. And we had an average muzzle velocity of 27.15, extreme spread of 29, and a standard deviation of 10. So the velocity spread still really not that bad. It wasn't phenomenal by any means, but it wasn't bad. But the group just kind of kind of sucked. So we're gonna shoot the one more group <clears throat> within 55, or I'm sorry, in 555, and then we'll be done with this rifle. Pretty sure I already know uh, what we're gonna what we're gonna load going forward. Our last up is going to be 41.2 grains of Vitivori N555. We're going to be going for the right side of the center diamond. 2862. 2862 again. 28.50. 2681 and 2642 so awesome group the velocity spread was not nearly as impressive as that 135 grain burger but the group was not even remotely close to the other two that we just shot it was so much better so that was actually one of our worst velocity spreads the average muzzle velocity was 2663 the extreme spread was 40 and the standard deviation was 16. So overall, obviously, the 135 grain burger won in this test. Uh, in 555, definitely paired with it well. That was pretty obvious. But as far as the 140 Sierra Match King, overall, it just shot worse. But that last group was definitely a lot more promising as far as what it's maybe capable of. But just in the grand scheme of things, it just didn't really impress across the board. So 135 grain burger and in 555, it's going to be continued to be tested in this rifle. Honestly, I think I'm good with just that because the velocity doesn't need to be insanely high. That's plenty good for me. So 
we're probably just going to roll with that, but we'll retest it to make sure that all is good, and then we'll uh, load up the rest of our brass. So thank you guys for watching as usual. Always appreciate it. If y'all have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to ask. And uh, y'all remember to glorify God, stay risen, be safe, take care, and we will see you in the next video.